you did grade 11 at the age of 20. 21. 21. Yeah, yeah. Your grade 12. Oh, sure. yeah. You said grade 11? Yeah. Oh, grade yeah. 11. Did you get to grade 12? I got to grade 12. But you were 21. Yes. And most of your peers are obviously in varsity, right? Yeah. And you mentioned repeating almost every grade. grade. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you didn't know that you've got dyslexia. Yeah, I had no idea. Huh? Until I got to grade 11, I was told by a teacher who was amazing that you're not dumb, you just have dyslexia and we can work around it. And unfortunately, she left the school. Sure. Hey guys, I know a lot of you are like me, busy or sometimes even forget to get some of your groceries. Well, worry not because you can get fresh, fast groceries delivered to you with pick and pay ASAP. And you can also get 75 rand off your first shop if you use the code fresh ASAP. Now that's fresh. Hello, Wisdom and Wellness family. I am so excited about today's conversation. I literally had to say cut and start again because we have been going on. Today, I am sitting with the incredible Justice Mukherjee. I hope I said your surname right. He's yeah. a painter, film director, and photographer, born and bred in Soweto, and his work explores themes of race, gender, sexuality, love, and hope. And he, this man can talk. We have been talking. <laughs> He started with my husband. I'm just like, stop stealing my whole conversation. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for the wonderful intro. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited Appreciate to have it. you. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to start with some icebreakers. Yeah. If you could travel one to one country for the rest of your life, mm. yeah? like every time it's holidays, like you can only go back to this one country. Yeah. Where would it be? Nigeria. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What is it about Nigeria? Uh, it's soulful. It's everything you are told it's not. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it has a lot of soul. The people are beautiful. Yeah. Uh, inside and out. And the it's food? It's a beautiful country. I mean, unfortunately, I never, I've never connected with the food that well. Okay. But it's more the people. Okay. The people are amazing. The land is amazing. And you've traveled quite a lot. Ne? Yeah, yeah, Like I outside have. of the continent and yeah, everything. Yeah, everywhere. Well, okay. A lot of places, yes. Okay, now we yeah, know yeah. to go to Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. What's the last meal that you had? Now? Just, I don't know. What did you eat? Oh, I had scrambled eggs, toast, bacon, evo. Okay, yeah, yeah. giving English. What's have, what are you having for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll have... Pop. Yeah, seven colors. Yes, <laughs> pop. Seven colors on yeah. a Tuesday in the middle of I have the day. that every day. Every day? If I can, yes. Oh, but you've got abs. Yeah, because luckily I am blessed with uh, good genetics okay. and I exercise a lot. Like every day? Yeah, uh, six days a week. Okay, yeah, I yeah. get it. If you could come back as a rapper mm. or like a cool producer, who would it be? Whew. My favorite rapper now, I've got don't two. Don't be deep. We need no, to know the person. I don't think you'll know them. <laughs> exactly. Na Navy Blue. And Chuck Strangers. For some reason, I thought you were going to say Pharrell Williams. Uh, musically, I don't, he's not up there for me. Not musically, just personality. But I mean, I don't know you no, that well. No, definitely not personality. I mean, he's cool. Yeah. He's cool. He's yeah. influenced us our whole And laid back. Teens. Yeah, he's laid back. He's kick ass. I would, maybe personality, I'd go for Most Def. Most Def. Yasin Bey. Okay. Yeah, I, I like his. Band. <laughs> I know most <laughs> deaf, but I don't know the music. But yeah, you know. yeah, his music is amazing. Okay. But if uh, yeah, musically definitely Yasin Bey and personality, I like him. Is late and is super stylish. Yeah. Okay. And offbeat, which I like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, biggest purchase you made this year? <laughs> I don't know. Is big uh, price or price. sure? Oh, I bought a G wagon. <laughs> oh, 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 you're driving our dream cars. And no, it, uh, it's a classic G wagon. Okay, I've yeah. seen it. Le yeah, the venture, yeah. original venture. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> and how did it feel? Did it feel better buying it or like dreaming for it was better? Uh, definitely buying it felt great. Is it? Yeah, dreaming. I mean, dreaming about something is cool, but you don't have it. You're still dreaming. So my dream became a reality, especially the classic, you okay. know? Yeah. yeah. I find, and I'm asking that because I find sometimes the dream and the process towards the dream is always better than the actual, the actual thing. 
I mean, if I want to be deep, I'd say yes, but I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't agree. That's okay. not my 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 Your experience. my experience. Yes, the journey t- working towards whatever I'd love to achieve, yeah, is good, but it's definitely not better than achieving what I'm working towards. I love it. Yeah. Honestly, and, that's for me. And I love it. Yeah. I don't know if you remember the first time we met. Your husband just reminded me. Why did he do that? <laughs> Do you remember though? Did yes. you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me your version. Mm. I mean, I was still working with my brother in Vuyo and yeah. now, as I see it, different you and Ongama. Yeah. And we got an opportunity to shoot a commercial yeah. um, photography for console. That console. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we casted a lot of beautiful people. Yeah. And you were amongst them. Yeah. Yeah. And we photographed in Maboning, if yes, in a in penthouse. Maboning. And it was late. Yeah, it was nice. Do you know what I remember about that day? Mm. Um, I had just dropped out of varsity, right? Okay. So I was in like a horrible place. Like mm. I was in a horrible place mm. and I was trying out castings and everything. And mm. it was my first ever casting and I got it. Yeah. And it felt like, okay, so my future is not gone. Yeah. And we shot the commercial, the TV one. Yeah, yeah. And we spent the whole day there. You guys weren't part of that. Yeah, the TV yeah, one. Yeah. We spent the whole day there. And... Like, I could see, would see the camera didn't even look at me once. Like, you know, when you're like an extra, extra. And yeah. I was so down. Um, and then we went for the photography. I don't remember what you and your brother said to me. Yeah. But I remember how you guys made me feel. You made yeah, yeah. me feel like I have been doing this for years. I am the best person to ever do, do it. Yeah, yeah. And every time I've seen, like... Years after that, every time I've seen, I'm like, oh, I remember how those guys yeah, made yeah. me feel. I'm glad we made you feel that way. I mean, it's our ethos, yeah. uh, unspoken. Yeah. Because other people had to believe in us without any experience yeah. that we are amazing and the best at what we do when yeah. we haven't done it yet. So I love doing that for other people because, yeah, yeah everyone is the best. Yeah. We need it. Yeah, yeah. I heard you speak... Um, at Agenda Woman, and yes. there's a specific part that I want to touch on um, mm. when it comes to the father wound, right? Mm. Which is a it's, it's a really big one, and it's not spoken about enough. But I feel like it's mm. becoming a conversation. And if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned that the last time you saw your father, I think was at the age of seven. So he, I was. 12, 12 when 12. he left yeah yeah he left when i was 12 then i saw him again when i was 21 late 21 yeah. yeah 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 and have you seen him since then yeah i mean we asked him to come back home in the house that we grew up in because um we were fortunate to be able to buy our mom a house in the suburbs so that she can have yeah. a life similar to what we are having sure then we asked our dad to come back because life wasn't too kind to him sure wait yeah. so nim really love back so now no not love back <laughs> just okay. him coming back home yeah Epimville. yeah because my mom is not oh, staying there anymore Oh, okay yes. i see yeah, yeah, yeah. now what i want to talk about is mm. how your life was from i guess from the time you were you were born up until 12 having yeah. a father present yeah, yeah. and then that disconnect and how and who you became as soon as he just like left it's like one minute yeah. you've got a father for the first 12 years of your life and then next thing is yeah. gone and it's not gone because he's He's passed on. Yeah, yeah. He's gone because I suppose he chose to go. To go. To go. Yeah. To be with other women. So, okay. <laughs> I, <wasn't laughs> say that. I mean, our fathers do that. We do that. Yeah. So, anyway, um, yeah. From when I was born till I was twelve, my dad was amazing. Yeah. You know, he's amazing. He was our best friend. My first interest in art was through him. He made a drawing of my brother and I sitting beside him, listening to jazz, mm. which he enjoyed doing that with my brother and I. So that gave us a musical ear yeah. and an interest in music. That's yeah. why we started making music. But yeah, yeah, he was amazing. Sure. We'd run together. My interest in being an athlete was through him. Mm. So he was present. He was a friend. He was a father. He was firm, he was soft, sure. he was kind, he was strong. He was all the good things. Yeah. Then he left. And when he left, I would say that was my first heartbreak. Yeah. 
um, that is similar to romantic heartbreak. Sure. You know, because also he left without explanation. And when he left, he asked my brother and I to walk him to the bus stop because he was going to visit his mom in Venda. And we walked him and we never saw him until we were 21. Hi, Bo. So yeah. it's a normal day. Yeah. Ubaba's just going home to visit. Yeah. Niam Kappa. I'm sure the yeah. goodbye was casual. Yeah, it was casual as as we were. And my dad, we were so close every day hmm. uh, when he comes back from work, would be around 5.30, would be outside the house just playing, waiting yeah, for like him. Yeah, like waiting for him. Yeah. yeah, so that when we see him walk, he had a distinctive, you know, gassy walk yeah. <laughs> in his dickies. So when he's walking down, we'd see him and run up to him. Sure. So if I go to Pinville to date just after 5 o'clock, and I'm waiting around there. I still see an image of him walking down. Sure. So, yeah. It's... So, now, the next day, hmm. like, when do you realize as a child, we'll see? After three months. After three months? Yeah. That's when hmm. it clocks, we'll see this person's not coming back. Yeah, my mom told us that she had a, con a, a conversation with him that was confusing. And he said he's not coming back. And she said she's going to go to his mom's house to go see and hear if he actually means it or what it is. And he said she mustn't come. But lucky our mother spoke us through everything that uh, was going on. So we didn't have to formulate stories. Yeah. You so know? you, you so, knew exactly what was happening. Yeah. And it was tough because I got angry. Yeah. And I did not understand for a long time, then I remember having a conversation with him over the phone when I was 18. Hmm. You called him? Yeah, I called him. And I was asking him, he got a retirement package. Hmm. So I was struggling at school. I was not doing well. And my brother had dropped out. My brother dropped out at grade nine. Sure. So I was, I think, in grade 11 or 10. You were 20. <laughs> I was, oh, you were I was, 18 at the time. Yeah, I was yes. 18 in grade 10. Sure. Um, and I wanted to leave school. So I called him to ask him to help me get into an art college. Hmm. Or just the college so that I can do, what do they call N3? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. I could do more technical work yeah. than academic work. Yeah. And I had a tough conversation with him, asking him then, after asking him to help me, he asked me, um, how old am, am I? And I said, I'm 18. And he said, at 18, he had an ID, he had a job and a family. Sure. So I shouldn't be entitled to him helping me. And this phone call is ridiculous. And I should never call him again for Oof. stupid things. I must be a man and go get a job. And that was tough. And sure. yeah, when he said that, I mean, it hurt like it's nothing. It's painful else. hearing you say it now. Yeah, but I'm grateful for that moment because it made me lean into myself ah. and not seek help. Not depend you on You know others. that, yeah, I am all I have, yeah. well, including my brother. Well, that explains so, your, your work ethic because I was listening to an interview and you're like, if someone's going to hand in like two... Uh, like assignments or whatever, yeah, you, go, yeah. you and your brother are going to hand in 20 because yeah, you're going to sure. outwork um, everyone. Yeah, because hard work is all I have. Sure. You know, if my mom had the means, she'd help us. Yeah. You know, if anyone in my family, if they had the means, they would. But at that time, they didn't have the means. So all the dreams we have for ourselves and our family, we had to make them happen. How did it change you? Did you notice, and, and thinking back now as a 38-year-old man, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> how, do you remember a distinctive, an exact moment where you realized you're changing? Because I, I think of your childhood and I can imagine a playful, happy boy who's got his father, who runs yeah, to yeah. his father, and then there's this drastic change and you have to mm. deal with it. So how, mm. can you... Can you go back to how you changed as a boy yeah. to a man based on that one 
father experience? Yeah. I mean, it was it was super difficult. Yeah. But my mom showed up for us. Mm. You know, my mom held us together and made sure we don't feel like there's we are lacking anything. And no, and never, yeah. Yeah. And as you would know, black communities are incredible. Everyone comes together to raise children. Yeah. So in our neighborhood, in our church, we had father figures, we had uncles, we had every support that we needed, yeah. even though we knew that our own is not around. Sure. Then I also became delusional and formulated a story that I wanted to believe so that I can make it through this pain. Sure. What story you was know, that? Yeah, I'd just make up the idea of my father still being around and is successful. And if someone asks me about my dad, I'd speak as if he's still around. Even my friends, until much later in our life, sure. knew that our father is not around very late. So the whole yeah. time you you and your brother are just pretending like, yeah. as if... Because it's not a reality I was willing to accept. Sure. And kids are hateful. Yeah. When I reflect, yeah. kids are hateful, you know. And it was I can imagine I was hateful to other kids too, because growing up in our community, my brother and I were the only ones that had both parents. Oh, okay. So sure. I recall being a kid, you know, boasting that ah, I live with I mean, my mom and dad, yeah. you know, in primary school, and none of the students lived with both their parents. Sure. You know, so. That made me formulate an idea that's not there. And I'm grateful for it because for that time, that's what I needed. Yeah. You know? That's painful. Yeah. Now, going back to this father wound, I was listening to a conversation between um, Mike Todd, and he talks a lot about mm. trauma. And, and there's a specific line he says, like, what doesn't get transformed gets transferred, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. how are you making sure that you are not projecting or continuing yeah. um, the pain that a man instilled in you, like in the way that you treat women, in the way yeah, that you yeah. treat your new wife, um, yeah, yeah. your godson, and your yeah. future children should you have? Yeah, I mean, a lot of therapy. Yeah. A lot of I, I do three different types of therapies. I bo when yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a priority in your life. Yeah, it is. It's like if you don't service your car, it's not gonna be healthy. Okay. You know. Okay. Um, and with all the therapy and work that I do, I'm still not perfect. I'm yeah. still work in progress. Yeah. I've slipped up. I've made bad choices. I've been hateful. Yeah. And sometimes, most of the time, it's unintentional. Yeah. What are the three types of therapy that you're doing? So I've got dyslexia. Yes. Um, so I do a therapy called NLP for my dyslexia. But the NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, is so powerful that I do it for both my dyslexia and my personal work. Okay. Um, so those are two that I oh, do. Oh, two that you do, yeah? Yeah, then... I do just regular counseling. Yeah, yeah, counseling, yeah. Sure. Then, yeah, I mean, I would say if it counts, my wife does a lot of therapy for me. What do you In mean? A, um, yeah, she is my therapist. Okay, so she offers for a parts, safe space. For yeah, her. for parts of my life I can discuss with her. Okay. Because, you know, therapy is personal and some yeah. things you don't want to talk about things you're going through to your wife that could trigger her. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And sometimes I think even as a wife, mm. it's, it's very hard because you don't necessarily have the tools to support someone. Like, it's just like, yeah. okay, in this moment, do I need to give advice or in this yeah, moment, yeah. do I need to just listen or yeah. like, like how do I hold space and make sure that this person like yeah. feels space, especially because we grew up and a, a lot of men just are not willing to open up. So when the opening yeah. up happens, it's like, I've oh, never yeah. seen this. Like, how do I handle this? Like wh what, yeah. what must happen? We don't open up because we are ashamed. Yeah. If I open up to my, to a woman, not yeah. just my woman about if I'm going through a rough, 
turn financially. Yeah. I'm going to be shamed. It depends who you open. Okay. Generally. Generally, yeah. Because the, the, the general answer to that is window danger. Even though they might not say it to your face. Sure. To window danger. Well, well, how do you think as, as women we should handle it better? Because now remember... What patriarchy did, and you speak a lot about this, mm. is that patriarchy taught us that a man provides. Yeah, for a sure. A man is strong. And only now are we grappling with that, oh, men don't be strong anymore. Like, we yeah, don't need yeah. you to be strong. And that yeah. is still a thing. But yeah. the whole provision thing, it's now we must switch to now as a woman, you're also, like, it's a whole lot of changes that are happening at the same time. Yeah. And we don't know how to handle them. Yeah. And unfortunately, the financial one, I guess, is the hardest because yeah. a man has been positioned as a provider. Like, we didn't talk to our fathers. Our fathers just brought the money home. To the table. Yeah, I mean, if I think about it, raising a child is not a financial thing only, you know. Yeah. If, for me, I didn't grow up in a wealthy family at yeah. all. We were not middle class. But the time I spent with my dad, even though I knew he had no money, yeah. was amazing. Yeah, that meant You know, I knew. You know, it's it it's tough in your family if you know the budget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you you know, know, I knew the budget. <laughs> yeah. But I was very happy because sure. my dad was there. Sure. You yeah. know, and I think... Patriarchy taught us a lot of things, and there's good and bad, you know. And in the conversation of men can be soft and you don't have to be strong and all that, I think the expectation women have on men, they should be able to uphold the same. You Agreed. know? Yeah, because I can't be expected to hold it down. Actually, there's an exception for a man who is doing well rather than a man who's not <laughs> there's a say there's someone who said on twitter which i actually think is a little true that yeah. uh, men aren't loved unconditionally <laughs> women are loved unconditionally yeah because who has time for a broke man you, let me actually yeah. i'm going to challenge you on this mm. you know what and and i think if you think about it think of mm. the families um you grew up around right yeah where where there were fathers at home yeah most times yeah the woman was the one bringing it home, like bringing the money home. Yeah. But the woman positioned the man as the one who's, who's bringing it home. Yeah. However, the man couldn't handle that. Mm. And then in turn, their character, they didn't do work on themselves. So now you're not only dealing with someone who's not helping you financially. Now you're mm. dealing with a broken person who's insecure and making you feel bad about showing up. Mm. So no. do you understand the cycle? No, I understand the cycle, but it's a cycle that us as a society we created because the space is not safe yeah for, for anyone. <laughs> yeah imagine imagine it's not safe between men yeah like uh, if i'm with my homeboys and i know my homeboy has a wife and children and he's broke yeah i'm not a safe space to him either even Why? though we understand as men that you know it's tough yeah but I'll have judgment towards him. So imagine he can't feel safe yeah. in what's supposed to be his, his safest, safest place, place. Yeah. amongst other men. Yeah. When he gets home, his wife is the one that's bringing in the money. Yeah. And she gives him the bank card. And when she gives him the bank card, he feels emasculated. Instead yeah. of embracing and appreciating that, yeah. he becomes bitter. And he wants to control her money. He wants to be extra... Uh, extra tough yeah. he becomes abusive yeah. physically and emotionally and tough to the kids because he himself doesn't know how to handle that and yes there's a parallel co conversation ar alongside that that what is he doing why doesn't he try with what he have to bring something, something. to the table yeah you know but some people get so overwhelmed by all of that mm. They, they can't that. rise above it. Yeah. Am I sympathetic? Yeah, to a point. But, you know, my patriarchy just makes me think that, hey, man, just Get tough it out and do something. Yeah. Something. Something, yeah. yeah well, I mean, something. at 18 years old, you were told, Guti. Yeah, I mustn't. Yeah. Like, get up and go. You know, so, yeah, it's a tough conversation. And my position at this is still work in progress. But... 
I do have sympathy for men and for women, and for women. going through this challenge. Yeah. Uh, it's a difficult marriage one. Or relationship, it's a, it, it's yeah. really a difficult conversation, but I think it's one that mm. that um, really has to be. It really has to be had, especially just mm. even even just amongst women. The whole like deconstruction, that whole idea of you. It's like the Bible and society outside tells you a man protects, but it mm. almost feels like everything society says a man does. In the home, it's the woman who's doing that. So there's a bit of yeah, a confusion. Sure. And I feel like they need, I think truth will set us all free. free that yeah. we all protect, we all provide, yeah. we all offer safe space. Yeah, I mean, I think for us and our, society, uh, our generation, yeah. maybe I'll speak for myself, the idea of a man who protects and provide and whatever, you know, you bring in the money, you mm. do this, you, mm. you do that, I'm the leader, I'm this. Mm. I don't think it's entirely true. It's what you it's are told. Yeah. You know, even when I observed, my dad is the one that worked at home, but yeah. I know my mom held it down. Yeah. You know, it's not money that builds a home. No. Between my wife and I, we don't have children yeah. yet. You know, I may be the primary earner. Yeah. But everything she does in the household far outweighs the money i bring sure everything and That's the therapy speaking <laughs> no it's not no, it's, but, it's, no it's, but it's like it's it's yeah. awareness it's self-awareness yeah it's and self-awareness. you know i would challenge men with wives and children yeah to ask themselves those questions honestly what would your household be without your wife would you know where a headache tab- tablet sits yeah and with really overlook those things yeah. you know would you know what to do if the child is not well yeah you know would you know where to take them would <laughs> yeah. you you know would you know what to do at three o'clock so that at six o'clock when you arrive everything you need is provided for would you know i have a question for you yeah. do you think you would considering your whole your mm. life yeah, yeah. um and your patriarchy ways yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you think you'd be able handle to handle a home where your wife is the primary um provider and you are the one who knows where the headache tablet is truthfully and honestly honestly no okay i wouldn't let myself be provided for what if everything is taken away from you and it's, what let's say it's COVID, yeah. another lockdown, and yeah, yeah. you can't sell your art, you can't, yeah, yeah. like, God forbid, yeah, everything yeah. gets taken away from you, There's and all you so have is much... the home, and your wife's job is thriving, and yeah. you have to handle everything you've built around her handling, yeah. because your understanding, or where you are right now, is yeah. I, I, I love the position of providing. Yeah, I mean, truthfully, I don't know if I'd be able to do that because okay. I would fight for my life to be able to provide within what I have. Okay. You know, yeah. there are so many avenues to explore, yeah. to kick back. Well, then that's the pride of a man. And then that's the pride that I think the other people we were talking about are struggling yeah. with where it's like, my pride is being eaten away every yeah. single day and there's nothing I can, I can do about do. it. I would never not do anything about it. Yeah. I'd go to call center and work <laughs> or wash cars. I'll yeah. come up with ideas. I'll do gardens. Yeah. I'll do everything I can with what I have to be Take able to. Yeah. Yeah. Alongside my wife. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much more she brings. Ah. It does not matter. That's not going to challenge me. Okay. What's going to challenge me is sitting around doing nothing accepting that i don't have the means i love that to you bring mentioned that yeah. now you you did grade 11 at the age of 20 right? 21 21 yeah yeah your grade 12 oh sure. yeah you said grade 11 yeah oh, grade yeah. 11 did you get to grade 12 i got to grade 12 but you were 21 yes and most of your peers are obviously in varsity right yeah and you mentioned repeating almost every grade, grade. yeah yeah for sure but you didn't know that you've got dyslexia yeah i had no idea How? until i got to grade 11 i was told by a teacher who was amazing that you're not dumb you just have dyslexia and we can work around it and unfortunately she left the school sure 
So everyone who was a teacher then did not know what I needed. Sure. All they knew was that I just this is dumb. Yeah, failure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no failure. But now as a as a kid, man. Yeah. And I can think of so many kids mm. I went to school with um because mm. I went to like an African school and yeah, then yeah. like we were grouped according to how so much you are. So yeah. I knew that every year I'm working towards to be in grade six point one. Like yeah, once yeah. you go to grade six point three, like yeah, yeah. you are the C damn student. child. Yeah. yeah. C you student. Know? Yeah. And how how did you deal with that? How did you even manage to get to what's it even if it means I'm the mm. ancestor of the class? I mean, first of all, my relentless efforts to try get to grade twelve and finish was to please my mom. Oh. But I knew that I'm not gonna get through. Sure. So I, I stuck it out for her. Um Lucky, my mom is very affirming and she's my brother and I's biggest fan. Yeah. And she always affirmed us that you are not dumb. They just don't understand you. Mm. You know, mm. there's so much to life than all of what's expected of you mm. at school. Mm. You know, you'll be so much more than what everyone thinks. Sure. You know, so she affirmed us. I never, <clears throat> even though teachers were hateful and say I'm stupid and this, there's never been a day where I felt I was. Wow.